down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most I please in your presence, Lord. I seek your faith. I seek your faith. Down, O oh Lord, down at your feet, O oh Lord, is the most, most I place in your presence, Lord. I seek your face. I see your face. There is no, no higher calling, no, no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed, I'm amazed, I'm amazed at your glory embraced by your presence so oh lord i live to worship you there is no there is no there is no there is no no higher calling no no greater honor than to bow and kneel before your throne i'm amazed i'm amazed i'm amazed i'm amazed by your glory embraced by your presence oh lord i live to worship you oh lord i live to worship you down oh lord down at your feet your feet oh lord is the most most i place in your presence lord i seek i seek your face i seek your face down oh lord down down at your feet oh lord is the most most i place in your presence, Lord, I seek your faith. I seek your faith. Oh, no, there is no higher calling. No greater honor than to bow, bow, and kneel before your throne. I'm amazed. I'm amazed by your glory, embraced by your presence, O oh Lord. I live to worship you. There is no, there is no higher calling. No, there is no greater honor than to bow, to bow. And kneel before your throne. I'm amazed, I'm amazed, I'm amazed, I'm amazed by your glory and brave by your presence, oh Lord. I live to worship you, oh Lord. I live to worship you. Hello people, hello people, hello people. It's a chapter a day, your favorite Bible program by your very own Princess Clayton, Queen of Hearts and Laughter. <laughs> oh my God, oh my God. Today I really laughed so much. Oh yeah, so what is a chapter a day all about? A chapter a day was born out of me desiring to go viral, but God is deciding to use me to spread the word of God in my own little way. 
the way he thinks I should and know how to. So he gave me a voice and he's using the voice to be a blessing to my generation and beyond. Because if I'm not here anymore, people are still going to watch this video. That's the beautiful thing about social media and all these things that are happening, you know. So yeah. Thank God for honoring me and making it possible for me to be the one to be one of the members of his end time army. Oh yeah. So what do we do on a chapter a day? We get to study the word of God. The original idea is to create an audio Bible. We're creating an audio Bible by me. And then as we create the Bible, we're definitely going to be reading together. We're going to be studying together after. So a lot of things have happened on the chapter a day. What we believe in the chapter today is whatever is good, whatever is true, whatever is honest, whatever is trustworthy, whatever can cause people to grow and be their best versions and be the next best of them that they have to be. That's exactly what we do in the chapter today. But we have an opportunity to do that mostly after we're done reading the Bible. So after we've done reading the Bible, the chapter we have to read for that particular day, then we can go ahead and talk about everything everything goodness everything that has good in it you know good and god in it we'll go ahead and do that so today we're going to be reading genesis chapter 27 that's where our bible party is going to come from and of course we're going to be studying together and praying for the birthday people and all that whatever else come comes up we're going to do it don't forget to share so that many more people can come and let's get blessed. You can also create a watch party. That would be good. So you can get a lot more people to also get to watch. In groups, on your page, on your wall, wherever. You know, you can be saying to yourself that, well, I can be confident enough and bold enough to preach the gospel like this. Which you can do. If you trust God and yield to him, he's going to use you to do amazing things. Things beyond your reasonable understanding. But. If you say you can't do that and you still are sure beyond all reasonable doubts you can't, you can share this out. That's you indirectly preaching the gospel to people in your audience. Mm -hmm. So God has made me available. I'm here and I'm doing it. And so just sharing it by click of the button, another person can get blessed by this message. So let's pray and hand over the session to God and then we start right away. We don't want to take so much of your time. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this amazing, 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 awesome day that you've given to us. We rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for all the amazing things that have happened today. Challenges, beautiful times, successful times, victories and all. Lord, we thank you because we know regardless of what we happen, what happens in every day, you always work it out for our good and you always cause us to come out victoriously. Father, we pray again, we've come to your table to dine. Feed us, O oh God, with all the choices and nutrients that are necessary for us to grow and grow strong and healthy and kicking to the glory of your name so we can manifest to the growing nation the manifestations that are expecting from the sons of God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Speak to us in a very special way because we know you've heard and answered us. In Jesus' mighty and blessed, blessed, blessed name, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, increase while I decrease. So that it's going to be you that will be heard, felt, and seen throughout this session of a chapter a day. Thank you, Lord, for answering us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Welcome, Sir Onye Dikachi Prince Will, my brother of another mother. Thank you for coming, man of God. We appreciate you. Please do not forget to share us out. You share us out and many more people can come. So we're going right on to the birthday party. Birthday party. Today we're reading Genesis chapter 26 and it has 35 verses. So let's do the birthday party first. Bur 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 birthday party first. Bur bur birthday party first. Bur 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 birthday party first. So today is the 15th of October and we have about five people who were born on this particular day. So the first person is Mambi Dipsuri. Mambi Dipsuri, we actually, I think it's my elder sister's classmate or something. Yeah, and then we became friends on Facebook and we had a very swell time together. God bless you, mom. 
and then we also have uh, Mina's mom. Mina's mom is also my my sister's friend, my kid sister's friend, and we got to connect with each other. She 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 acts so well. She's a beautiful actress. She's also an ESL teacher and all that. Okay, and then the next person we have is my little nephew. I I didn't get his name. I always just call him Maggie son. Yeah, <laughs> don't mind me. I do that a lot. God help me. And then we have Mam Behilda. Mam Behilda is an amazing lady. Like we met on the talk show I was hosting. I was hosting a certain talk show and she came on there. I mean, she was like, oh my God, she was the bomb. She was just a right good. You know when people have a disability, but they don't let the disability, um, they don't let it take over them. They don't let it take over them. They, they're still living their life. They're still doing what they have to do. Even with the challenges of being uh, of having a disability, they still go all out and be a blessing to the world. That's who Man Be Hilda is. I mean, she challenges me with every fiber of her being. I seen the first day I met her, she actually drew, she actually painted a picture with her mouth. I saw that picture recently and I said I was gonna post it somewhere and talk about her, but I can't find the picture anymore. <clears throat> I'd have to look for it. Man Be Hilda is just outright awesome she's an awesome lady and when i look at her sometimes i ask myself god ain't i lazy ain't i really lazy because some of us we have our hands we have every part of our body we have ourselves right there strong kicking and healthy and we're complaining and grumbling oh my god it is so sad but you see this lady she's doing her best she's going all out i mean like She's just outright amazing. She's amazing. Happy birthday to you, Mom Be Healed there. And then the last but not the least is Mom Ewenye. Mom Ewenye is an awesome ESL teacher. She's an awesome friend. She's just amazing. She does what she does with all of her heart and she's passionate about it and you can feel it. She's also a business lady. She's into ladies, um, ladies accessories she has some ladies accessories especially strainers and stuff like that oh my gosh she 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 has quality stuff like everything she does she does it with quality and with a passion that's what i like about her and i love the way she's consistent in her advertising people will only buy from you when they know you're available when you're consistent when they know you're there when they can see you we can buy your product if we don't even know you exist. So you have to make us know you exist so we can get to buy your products. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's in people's faces every single day. And I love it. Like every moment she's in people's faces. That is real business. That's what we're talking about. And when she'll be having clients and having her money and making money and people will start saying, oh, probably she collected it from here or she did this or she did that. People always talk, darling. Anyways, just keep doing you. And trust that if God is in it, there ain't no limit. Happy birthday to you, Mami Wenye. Happy birthday to all these amazing people. So let's take it again. Happy birthday, Mam B. Hilda. Happy birthday, Mam B. Dipsuri. Happy birthday, Mina, Minash Mom. Happy birthday to my little nephew, Maggie's son. Happy birthday to Mam Wenye Mbesa. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you all so much. So let's pray for the birthday people and get straight on to the Bible party. Oh, one of the October people is in the building. A woman of God on fire, Mom Kate Kebila. I really, really appreciate you and I hope your birthday was actually beautiful. I wish I could see you and celebrate and just get a hug from you. I love hugs. Man, I'm a hugging bird. <laughs> like, I just love hugs. Hugs are so beautiful. Hugs can heal hugs can transform i know about smiles and hugs they're two weapons that are so so healthy and so beautiful but well the pandemic is making hugs to be like kind of extinct people are even scared to greet with the hand one more of hugs you know so i really love hugs sometimes i just feel sad i just go hug this my i, I used to have this my youth leader and auntie i'll just hug her sometimes i just hug her and cry and i'm fine and i just i just love hugs i love hugs there's a way my dad used to hug me oh we're talking about my dad today oh. so uh, now people are gonna get confused i have 
two dads one is late one is alive the biological one is late the second one is alive so i always talk about both of them in the present i don't know why like i've tried and tried and tried it's hard it's just a few times that i i'm really conscious and then i speak about my late dad in the past i kind of talk about him in the present almost all the time and people get mixed up they're like didn't you say your dad is late um okay you're talking about your other dad i'm no 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 no, no. i'm talking about my late dad <laughs> i don't talk about him in the past i don't know why i just don't know why it's hard if i talk about him in the past sometimes it feels like i'm speaking wrong english i don't know why but that's okay it's all good it's all good okay so now let's go let's do this let's do this let's do this so yeah we are praying for the birthday people and then we're getting the bible party started lord we thank you for all these amazing people oh god we thank you for bringing them on earth today the world is blessed the world was blessed some years ago and for those who are just entering in today the world is blessed and the world will keep being blessed for all those who keep coming in on the 15th of october <clears throat> lord we thank you for all these people we're grateful Father, I will pray you bless them. Open the windows of heaven upon their lives. <coughs> Transform them to the glory of your name, O oh God. Write beautiful stories on the pages of one their lives as the pages open up today, O oh God. Father, I pray you bless them in a very special way. Cause them to see opportunities that will be made available by you to them, O oh God. Open doors for them that no man can shut and shut every door that is not supposed to be open. That will be a distraction or would lead them astray, O oh God. Shut every door. Father, I pray that everyone or anything that is going to be a distraction to them and cause them to stray apart, let that thing or person lose their contact now. Let that thing or person disconnect from them right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, and that there's going to be a divine connection between them and people that are going to help them progress and do the will of God and fulfill purpose fully and totally. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you're going to bless them with blessings that will encompass them as a shield round about and no weapon formed to fetch against them shall prosper. And they're going to increase in wisdom and start to gain in favor before God and before men. Lord, and they're going to be a blessing in their generation and beyond, O oh God. Father, that you're going to cause money to meet money in their pockets, blessings to meet blessings in their life, favor to meet favor in their life, as you clothe them with a the garment of praise, honor, and favor. They are going to make their gifts are going to make a way for them and they're going to end up standing before kings, not before mean men. Lord, that king shall come to their rising because they're favored and grace and all they do shall prosper. Father, you say whatever we lay our hands on, you're going to prosper. Lord, prosper these ones as they begin to lay their hands on the things that they're doing, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that they're going to walk in a part of purpose till the rest of their days. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that if any of them gets overwhelmed, gets tired, and is about to give up, you're going to hear a voice right behind them saying, this is the way, walk thou in it, and they're not going to stray apart in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that the destiny helpers are going to locate them in the mighty name of Jesus, that they will have no peace, no rest until they locate them. Lord, I pray for the destiny helpers that they are supposed to be to other people as well. That they will see these people and know the people and do that which they have to do in these people's lives, O oh God. Father, I pray as well, O oh God, and I bring them before your throne of grace. Perfect all that concerns them, O oh Lord. Father, I pray that they are going to be world changers, pace setters, trailblazers, impact creators in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I pray that you give them a Psalms 126 state, a state of continuous laughter and rejoicing and dancing and singing. And if you tarry to come, they'll come back here next year to give testimonies to the glory of your name. Lord, when the cry for help, help is going to come out from east, west, north, and south. Lord, that they're going to be victorious in all that they do in the mighty name of Jesus. Victory is theirs, but now and forevermore. Lord, do and undo in their lives, O oh God. Father, I pray that you're going to give them strategies, methods, and techniques, O oh God, to be able to fulfill purpose and live the life which you've intended and purpose and dedicated for them to live because no one was created for just no reason. Everyone was created as a solution to their problem. Lord, I pray you open their eyes, enlighten the eyes and ears of their understanding to the solutions that they're supposed to be, to the problems that they're supposed to be solutions to. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because I know you've heard and answered. If you tarry to come, Lord, I pray 
that you're going to give them so many testimonies, so much so that they'll just be singing glory unto your holy name and they'll transfer these testimonies from generation to generation, causing the word to go viral. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you've heard and answered. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Let it be so. Amen in their lives. Amen. 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 Let it be so. Amen. 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 Amen in their lives. Amen. Let it be so. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 And amen. Okay. It's Bible party time, people. Ready or not, here I come. And like I said, today we're reading Genesis chapter 26. And Genesis chapter 26 has 35 verses, people. It has 35 verses. Let's get straight on. Genesis chapter 26. And there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went unto Abimelech king of the Philistines, unto Gera. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell, I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, and will bless thee. For unto thee, and unto thy seed, I will give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. And I will make thy seed to multiply the stars of heaven, and I'll give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Because that Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws, and Isaac dwelt in Gera. And the men of the place asked him of his wife, and he said, She's my sister, for he feared to say, She's my wife, lest said he, The men of the place should kill me for Rebekah because she was fair to look upon. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech king of the Philistines looked out at a window and saw and beheld Isaac was sporting with Rebekah his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how saidest thou, she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, Lest I die for her. And Abimelech said, what is this that thou hast done unto us? One of the people might lightly have leaned with her, with thy wife, and thou shouldest have brought guiltiness upon us. And Abimelech charged all his people, saying, He that touches this man or his wife shall surely be put to death. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year an hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possession of flocks and, of, and possessions of herds and, gr and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Abimelech said unto Isaac, Go from us. For thou art much mightier than we. And Isaac departed thence, and pitched his tent in the valley of Gerar, and dwelt there. And Isaac digged again the wells of water, which they had digged in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham, and he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley, and found their well of springing water, and the head men of Gerar did strive with Isaac's head men, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well Isaac, because they strove with him. And they digged another well, and strove for that also. And he called the name of it Sitna. And he removed from thence, and digged another well. And for that they strove not. And he called the name of it Rehoboth. And he said, For now the Lord had made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. And he went up from thence to Bathsheba. And the Lord appeared unto him the same night, and said, I am the God of Abraham thy father, fear not, for I am with thee, and will bless thee, and multiply thy seed for my servant Abraham's sakes. 
And he builded an altar there and called upon the name of the Lord and pitched his tent there. And there Isaac's sevens digged a well. Then Abimelech went to him from Gerar and Ahuzat, one of his friends, and Fickle, the chief captain of his army. And Isaac said unto them, Wherefore come ye to me, seeing ye hate me, and have sent me away from you? And they said, We saw certainly that the Lord was with thee. And we said, Let them be now an oath betwixt us, even betwixt us and thee, and let us make a covenant with thee, that thou would do us no hurt, as we have not touched thee, and as we have done unto thee nothing but good, and have sent thee away in peace. Thou art now the blessed of the Lord. And he made them a feast, and they did eat and drink, and they rose up betimes, they rose up betimes in the morning and swear one to another. And Isaac sent them away and they departed from him in peace. And it came to pass the same day that Isaac's servants came and told him concerning the well which they had digged and said unto him, We found water. And he called it Sheba. Therefore, the name of the city is Besheba until this day. And Esau was 40 years old. When he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashmath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. Okay. So that's it for the Bible party today. Let's go. We're going to go with this one slowly because I saw a couple of things in this message that are just getting me on. Like, oh my God, I'm sure God was showing me this to, 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 to do justice. <clears throat> I wanted to talk about this yesterday, but I was very patient. I felt a restraint in my spirit and it shows that it was supposed to happen today. Okay, and there was a famine in the land besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Abimelech, king of, and Isaac went unto Abimelech, the king of the Philistines, unto Gerah. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Go not down into Egypt, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Okay, there are lots of things that um, we, we, we do unconsciously like, Oh, my dad did this. So let me do it too. My, this person did this. So let me do it too. It has been a generational thing in our family. This is what we do. No, that in your family, that is what you guys do. Doesn't necessarily mean that what God wants you on it. <clears throat> oh yeah. I have a lot of brothers and sisters who are in really amazing places. All most of all in America, like people just think America is this heaven on earth. Like, America is like $2 away from heaven. Like you can use $2 and pay and go to heaven, something like that. You know, they, they say that as a joke sometimes. But you know, there are some people that if they're in America, they will not prosper as much as if they're in Africa or if they're in Europe or if they're in Asia. Know where God wants you to be and be there. Please, let me say that again. Know where God wants you to be and be there. Believe you me, there are going to be some people who will be in America and they will never be able to match up to what God would do in your life in Africa. They will never be able to match up with what God would do. Somebody might be in Asia and they will never be able to match up with what God would do with someone in maybe some village, some inner city. Somebody might be in the town, like the capital city, and there is no match for what God, would that person, what God would do, someone in an interior village. So people, <clears throat> it's not of him who, are, who will it, but of God who shows mercy. It's not for the swift. The race is not for the swift or the strong. It's God who shows mercy. So please do not be deceived though. Do not be deceived. Am I by any means saying that Europe is not good? No. Am I by any means saying that America is not good? No. Am I by any means saying that Asia is not good? No. That's not what I'm saying right now. All I'm saying is know where God wants you to be. That all your family members are in Asia doesn't mean that you should be in Asia. That all your family members are in Japan doesn't mean you should be in Japan. That all your family members are in, <clears throat> in America or in, or, in, or in Europe or wherever. That all your family members are there doesn't necessarily mean that you should be there. 
please people see i don't know how i can say this but i need to say it in words that people can understand but let me say that means say if all your family member they different on site it don't necessarily means they get for different that side too let me say it in pigeon listen to me again all your family member they different on place or they do something not necessarily means you two get for do one god might not want you doing that then in some cases yes god will want you to go on get along with your family and step on it sometimes he wouldn't want you there at all he wouldn't want you there at all so this is it um in abraham's days when there was famine in canaan boom he went to egypt and then this is isaac again the, the he knows probably he, he would have heard the father's story and all those things i think he was even there the last time no he wasn't he wasn't born yet Isaac was not born yet when um um they actually went to Egypt. So but I'm sure that that should have told him the story because Abraham was the kind of person that God said you transition everything down. So I'm sure Abraham would tell them stories and tell them the details because he wants them to learn from his mistakes as well. So this young man has also seen that there's famine again in Canaan and he's about to go to Egypt and God says no you ain't going to go to Egypt. You're going to stay where I'll tell you. and you see what I'll do to you and you see this is the funny thing because Abraham was moving and God had already told him that he was going to give this land to his descendants that's Canaan now the descendants are already in the land and a little challenge has come up they want to move see God has a place where he wants you to be go to him and ask him let him show you and you stay there My dad said something to me once. There was this time that we had this whole squabble about me. He wanted me to go to America and God wanted me to go to Ghana. Who leaves a third world country and want to go to another third world country? Like just like that. When they probably have an opportunity to go to America, which is like some people's dream country forever and ever. I basically never been a US person though, but I had this squabble and then one of the times I was just praying and saying God if it's really you who I said is going to have to go to you have to bring these people to accept you have to bring these people to to believe what you're saying and go on with me on it and so I'm sure God was dealing with everybody one by one because at some point my mom came and told me that this your matter this your gonna matter eh? I'm not putting my mouth in it again because God can literally slap somebody for this case That was how my mom got into it. And then one day I was just sitting like after I think it was after church service or Bible studies, I can't remember when, but I remember we were in the church. And then my daddy called me and said, "Hmm. That right now, when I'm ready to go to Ghana, I should just let him know he's going to take me and go and drop me off because of course, we're going to go by road. So he was going to go and take me and go drop me off because he has realized that if God wants you in a place he can make stones to gold and if he doesn't want you in a place and you go there forcefully gold can be there but he can make gold to stones so be careful so he has removed his hands of this my matter whenever i'm ready to go to ghana that's how boom it was but this our days we're so lazy we don't want to pray for anything any little challenge just come up we we'll look for our plan b's we have plan b c and d and e and f so it doesn't even make us focus on the original plan it doesn't even make us focus on the thing that god wants us to do because when god wants us to do something a little challenge comes up we we'll just drop it because we have a plan b we we'll go to plan b a little challenge comes up we we'll drop it because we have plan c i told you time without number i believe that all these plan b's and c's are lazy people mostly for the most part because i'll be wondering if um the 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 florissant bob guy if the florissant bob guy actually had a plan b or plan c we would not have been talking about the florissant bob today oh yeah we would not have been talking about it today because he would not have made it he would have given up he tried how many times care yeah. what was pushing him he knew that that's what he was called to do to resolve the problem of darkness and bring light to people people would have to see people would have to have a time where they're not just going to be in darkness even though it's night yes it's night it's a natural thing but we'll not just be in darkness in the night so my solution is to bring light to people in a house even when it's night time <clears throat> 
And so he knew that there was, there, there had to be no plan B. It's either he produces the fluorescent bulb or not. They, 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 like, no, he had two choices. Either he produced a fluorescent bulb or he must produce a fluorescent bulb. So I know that right now in my life, I have two choices. Either I encourage people or I must encourage people. And you know now, you know the one I'll choose. You need to know your calling like that. You need to know the purpose for which you were born like that. So that you're going to have no plan B, C's and D's. Because all these plan C's, B's and D's are the things that are making us lazy. They are making us half big Christians. They are making us microwave Christians. You can't stand any little challenge. But the Bible tells us that tribulations must come. But be not afraid because he has overcome the world. Be encouraged. Do not be afraid. Do not fear. God has overcome the world already. That's what he says. So please know where God wants you to be and be there. Know what God wants you to do and do it. Welcome daddy of mine and my son. Welcome my son and daddy. He's my son at the same time my father. Welcome to the live stream. God bless you. Please don't forget to share us out so many more people can come. So please know where God wants you to be. God wants some people to travel out of their countries because of whatever reason. Abraham did but it doesn't mean now that oh everybody has to follow suit and travel out of the country because Isaac wanted to go and God says mm -mm 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 -mm. divine positioning is key people it is key divine positioning is key you have to be where God wants you to be to get the things that he would have to give you if Isaac did not stay in that barren land and so he would not have harvested a hundredfold. And they did not just say he harvested. They would have just outrightly, rightly so, say he harvested, right? He harvested a hundredfold. That is way beyond what they would normally harvest on a normal harvest season. But this is during farming. How oh God is too much. I can't. See, some of the things God will tell you to do will be so stupid, will be so foolish to the human mind to the human eyes so don't even dare try to figure it out some of us have missed a lot of blessings and a lot of things that god had in store for us you know why because we're trying to figure it out we're trying to get a logical understanding as to what god is doing or what god wants to do in our lives through the things he's telling us to do please stop trying to figure out god you can't you can't figure him out. His ways are past finding. When he tells you that thing, the only thing I always cry out all the time is, be sure this is God. If you're sure it's God, if anyone wants to jump into the lagoon because you're doing whatever you're doing, hey, let them jump. <laughs> if everyone, if anyone decides that they're going to go to hell because you're doing what God says you should do, they should take an express ticket. Oh, that's true. That's so true. Because some people kind of emotionally blackmail you to not do what God wants you to do because they'll begin to say things like, are you serious? Are you for real? Like, what are you saying? I remember how some people have asked me that. What do you mean by you're waiting on God? And sometimes I just go back to God and say, you hear. You hear what they were saying to me, right? <laughs> You better do something or I'm tired of this whole shenanigans that these people are just playing all around this place, you know, like that. But I know God. God is never late. God is never, ever late. Sometimes people consider lateness. God can just be making that thing to wait for a reason. God will always have a good reason for having something to be the time to to stay for as long as he had to stay or whatever reason he has a reason 25 years i'm sure abraham they were walking before god and they were doing everything that he wanted but they had to the promise that they made to him when he was just leaving the land that he was leaving it was made alongside when he was leaving so you'll be thinking that maybe in a year or so he would have the promise but god knew he had to walk around for a bit for a little bit before getting to the place where he wanted to show him and having to walk around with a child or something would not have been an easy task. It would have been an uphill task. And so God says, no, I ain't going to give this man this child right now. 
I'm going to make him when he's almost at the point of settling. Then I'll give him his child. But someone will be looking at it and saying, ah, God promised you. Yeah, why? <laughs> you sure said the God really promised you. At some point, you know what happens? Me, I start doubting what I heard God. Ah, me, I'm telling you the truth. I don't come and lie to you. I'm not doing superwoman here. There's no superwoman in this thing of God. Oh. The Bible says that he who thinks he stand takes he let you fall. Me, I don't claim superhero. No. There are times that sometimes when God has spoken to me, I'm waiting for the thing and I'm expecting and things not for coming. It feels like I start telling myself that, are you sure it's not yourself who spoke to you? Are you sure it's not your flesh that spoke? Like you had over desired this thing. You had over thought about this thing. So you felt like you heard God. God helps me sometimes because there are confirmations that come from people. So that really strengthens my faith. Now it really builds my faith and boosts my faith. And I know that, oh no, it wasn't just me who was talking to myself. It wasn't just my flesh who wanted what it wanted, but God actually spoke. So yeah, when you hear God, do whatever he's telling you to do. So he told Isaac that you're not going to go like your father did. So let's leave that as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be well without end. That someone did something doesn't mean it's right for you. That someone did it this way doesn't mean that's the exact way you have to do it. Ask God to show you the way he wants you to do it. Yes, sometimes he might need you to use someone's lesson and learn from it and use the same way. But sometimes he might give you a different method altogether. There was a time God had to spit on the ground and mold, mold and put on people's eyes. There was a man, there were some times he just had to speak without even touching the people. There, there were different things God did for the same issue. Two blind people, 10 blind lepers. There, there were different things he did for the same people, the same set of people. This person was blind. Then there was, I mean, so please go to God. Let God tell you personally what he wants you to do per that situation, as per that situation. Let him be the one to tell you that, okay, go and listen to Princess's story. Let him be the one to tell you that, okay, go and look at um, uh, uh, Mom Kate's example. Okay, um, let him be the one to tell you that, go and look at Hans Nanya. Go and look at Nanya and, and see what he's doing. Let him be the one to tell you that because he knows the perfect solution that will work for you. He knows the, I mean, the ditto, ditto, ditto of every information that is important for you to get that thing that you're desiring or for you to see that thing that you're desiring or for you. I mean, he knows it detailly. If he knows the hairs of your head, then you think it's your life that he doesn't know about. Are you serious? A life too big for God to just be ignorant about it. If he knows the hairs on your head, like one by one. That's the God I serve, people. And so he stayed. He didn't go. And of course, there is always a tendency of lies telling when you were in the wrong places because you'll be trying to defend or trying to keep the people who are close to you. This is Isaac again telling a lie. Is his sister? Is his sister all right? But is that the whole truth? I've said here over and over again that no information is even way better than partial information because you can act on partial information and you get totally destroyed. Please, people who always give partial information, it's not good. It's not good. Don't put people in trouble. Don't put people in trouble. The, the, the faith with which you think you're going to be killed, why, you, why can't you put that faith in God that they're not going to touch your wife? They're not going to see her like they will not even see her. There have been scenarios where people prayed and, and, and God closed people's eyes for a time just for them to do a particular thing. Their eyes could be closed. You, you should believe God that much. You should believe God for a positive miracle as opposed to lying to cover up something that you think people are going to do to you. You think God is not concerned about that thing that is worrying you in your heart? That if you go to Egypt and God just said, I beg not even go for the Egypt, Seth. He didn't even go to the Egypt, but he still lied. <clears throat> Life's telling is not good. Lifestyling is not good because it doesn't only affect one person. It affects a lot of people. Imagine what would have happened to Abimelech the other time when Abraham came. Now again, Isaac has come again to bring that same curse upon them. He said, I'm sure he had learned his lesson. So no matter how nice a woman is, he doesn't even look that way. But he now was complaining about one of his men. Yes, of course. 
one of his men would have seen her and would have leaned with her and stuff like that. And it would bring a curse upon them. Meanwhile, the person was knowing that. So sometimes eh, it's about our personal relationship with God. See these people knowing fully well that it was, it was because they were lied to. They still got punished. Abimelech was still, his household was punished with barrenness. Even though it was Abraham who gave partial information. Like, sometimes I try to think about it and it doesn't make no sense. I just say, well, God is God. He probably knows why. He does those things. And so that's why we have. We need to have a personal relationship with God. Because some things might look good on the outside. But they're not a God things. And God will not want you to be on them. So be careful. Be very careful. And obey the voice of God. So Abraham. Um, Abraham. Since Abraham obeyed God. God was reminding Isaac about the promises that he had made with Abraham. And he says he will fulfill all these promises. Because Abraham was good. Abraham was his friend and all that. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. And Isaac dwelt there and he sowed and he harvested a hundredfold. And so when he got to Gerar, when he had to stay in Gerar in the place where he stayed, they asked him who. Um, who Rebecca was said it was a wife. And when Abimelech caught him, see, when you're a good person, right? You're good at heart, you trust God, you love God, God will never let you fall in the trap of the enemy. Will never let you fall in the trap of the enemy. He might only allow the enemy to do some stuff to you because he's testing you, because he wants to see how much you go, or because he's bragging about you. That's what I always say. I say, Lord, if you brag about me, oh God, I might make you I can, I might just make you get ashamed. Please Lord, don't brag about me. He says, I've been bragging about you, my darling, and you've been making me proud sometimes. You feel sometimes it's okay. It's okay. But sometimes you make me really, really proud. So there are those times when you talk about the, the, jack, the job scenario, it's not like you literally have to do things like job. There are some things, there are some sacrifices you made as a person already that are quantifiable to what job went through. There are some things that you have gone through as a person that can be quantified and qualified with what job went through. In your generation, that is an equivalent to what Job was going through in his generation at that time. So sometimes God is just bragging about you and he's just boasting about you. And so this is it. Like Abimelech was like, what? So Abimelech was a nice man. He was a good man. And God had seen his heart several times. He saved him for, for the case of Abraham and still saved his generation and still saved his community for Isaac's time. Because God showed him. So sometimes it's because the enemy has a foothold in our lives. That's why he can deal with us. The Bible says the enemy came and he found nothing in me. He was trying to remote control Jesus and there was nothing there. If the enemy comes and is trying to remote control you and there's nothing in your life that connects to him, that pertains to him, he can't do you nothing. He can't. Most of the times, some of these really, really good Christians are carried away because of Greed, envy, comparison, um, um, lust of the flesh and stuff like that. You know, oh, she wants a wealthy man. So yeah, when this guy comes and he's pretending to be born again, meanwhile he's not born again just because he wants to get her, he can easily get her. You know, like that. But when you are fully for God, when your heart is sold out for God, you can't be deceived. People can't deceive you. They can't. So those brothers who always stay, they chop their life as they say it. Finish chopping their life. Then they come to church and come and look for sister. You will meet your match. The sister to who would have finished chopping her life and coming to look for brother. That's the one you will meet. In Jesus name. It's a prayer and a walk. Because you people should just stop all this madness. You come and take somebody's beautiful daughter that has been groomed and trained well, love God and everything. And go and start maltreating and ill-treating. After you've lived your life and then you start behaving with her anyhow. Because you know she's God-fearing and she's not going to do anything stupid. It's not right. God will not even allow that to happen. So sisters, brothers, please love the Lord with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. 
And he will not let any of these things happen to you. That I know for sure. God has saved me several times. So I know what I'm talking about. And said, Abimelech charged all his people and warned them that do not touch you. Do not touch this man's wife in this thing. And then later on, he just had to send them away. <laughs> he sat there and he's harvested a hundredfold. So I'm saying, harvest time is always bigger. Whatever you harvest is always bigger than what you sow. So be careful what you sow. If you're sowing hatred, know that the hatred is going to come back big time. So most times, people will be able to physically see the hatred that is coming back to you. They won't see the seed you sow. You know, when they sow a pear seed or a mango seed or a corn, you know, just like the little tiny corn, when you sow it, people barely see it. People basically, they will not see it. It's too tiny. You just sow it. But it becomes a tree. And then it has lots and lots of pear, lots and lots of mangoes, you know, like a cup of corn. Like, you know, it's that big. So just know. No, that in itself should even scare you a little bit. It's supposed to be a good thing, but it should scare you a little bit. That if I'm sowing this kind of wickedness, it's going to come back bigger. And then now everybody is seeing the one that is coming back bigger, the good measure pressed down. They forgot that that's what you sow. You sow a little seed of anger, of bitterness, and it's coming back to you big time. Everybody now is seeing the one that is coming back to you big time. And they so soon forgot that. You sowed a little tiny act of bitterness or anger or hatred. Be careful what you sow because you're going to reap. These people didn't just reap the regular harvest that they normally do. They had a hundredfold. The Bible will not just put a hundredfold there just for the sake of it. It's way beyond the normal. In barren land, you think you being in that village is a problem? No. When God wants to bless you or when God puts his hand on your matter, huh? he will not ask anybody's permission. He will just go on and do what he's ready to do in your life. So forget all these people who are making yeng, 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 yeng around you. Forget them. When God did for your matter, eh? they're still joking. All the shakara that they do, they go calm down. God doesn't ask anybody's permission when he wants to bless you. And sometimes when he wants to bless you, it goes way beyond. And then people will start looking. They will forget the story so soon. What you've been through, they will remember only the glory. And you, hear, you start hearing people say, oh, I want his double portion. I want her double portion. I want their triple portion. I want their quadruple portion or whatever. They, oh, how many ever portions they want. But small, ta, so small the story. They cannot have big generation. God help us. And so he had all these possessions. He had a lot of things. And then he went away and started digging. And you think, oh, everything is fine now. He'll dig a well. Abimelech's people collect it. He'll dig a well. The Philistines will collect it. He will dig a well. The Philistines will collect it. I love the way Isaac grew up because he probably learned from his father. He's not a troublemaker. Some people, they're going to fight you to tooth and nail. And this is one thing I wanted to say. You remember this time where Abraham was refusing and saying that, no, he doesn't want this kind of thing. He wants to buy his land because if he doesn't buy the land now, when he has died and gone, fights will come out. This is the exact same thing. They gave him the land. Abimelech gave him the land, made a covenant with him and everything that people are not going to treat him bad and all. They're not going to treat each other bad. They're not going to treat each other's people's bad. Yes, they accepted. Abraham now is dead. All of a sudden, these people have started doing all these things. If it was his land, if it was his personal land, I don't think they would have dared to encroach there. So see, he just died shortly and then they started taking back all the walls, filling it up. And it's so sad. It's so sad. How we do people. Meanwhile, in those days, word of mouth was really working. Like if you say something, they really take it, take your word for it. And people were doing it. But it just so happened that these people made a vow and they were not keeping it. And each time Abimelech would come and say, because your people are doing good with my people, we've done good to you. Like, is there anything good in me digging my well and you guys taking it? Digging my well. And just like, like before... Even in the case of Abraham, I'm sure Abimelech didn't hear about it. But in this case, 
We didn't see Isaac complaining. Isaac didn't even tell Abimelech about it. But in Abraham's case, Abraham told. So you know there is a part where you have to speak up. For your things to be given back to you, sometimes you would have to speak up. You need to know when to be quiet and you need to know when to speak up. But probably God had his way or God had a way of what he wanted to do. So um, Isaac didn't speak up in his own time because we remember the last time when we read about Abraham, when Abraham spoke up and said, no, but your people have not treated me right. I dug my walls and they took it. And Abimelech said, oh my God, I'm so, so sorry. I'm really, really sorry. I didn't know about this. I didn't know about this. And this is where I'll talk to us. Some of us were mad at people for things that they know nothing about. Maybe a friend of a friend came and gossiped about another friend to you. And you're already irritated with a friend. You're already mad at them. You've not even spoken about it. Though. You've not called the friend to talk about it. You're so mad. And at some point you even start gossiping and everything. Not be so it did work. Abimelech was clueless. Just imagine Abraham, Abraham being angry with Abimelech. That Abimelech's people are come and he'll be thinking maybe it's Abimelech who send them. No. In his innocence, he was coming to come and make a covenant to him. Only to hear that his people have been doing that. And what happened immediately? He fixed the thing. So there are some people that don't even know that whatever they did hurt you. I always put it this way. We grew up in different backgrounds and different atmospheres, different environments. And there are some things that in my family... Someone will get away with it, but in someone's family, no, that's wrong and it's punishable. You probably get a punishment. You probably get a weeping. You probably get an ass whooping for doing whatever you did. But in my house, you get away with it. Like in my house, it's a normal thing. In my house, it might be a joke. It might be fun. It might be a fun thing to do. But in some other person's house, oh no, it's a punishable, it's a punishable crime. So if I go grow up now and then I meet you and then I'm doing those things and you're taking it for why is this person doing this? Does she not know it's wrong? In your house it was. In mine we we're getting away with it. So you have to sit me down probably and try to explain why you feel this thing is not okay. And then you see my perspective. Don't come to me judgmentally. Come to me with your perspective and ask me your perspective about it. Like, how do you see this thing? Don't you think it's supposed it hurts people? Don't you think if you look at it this way, this is what it is? And let you people talk about what you believe and how you see it. Because the truth is, as long as I'm standing at the north and you're standing at the south, you'll be seeing six, I'll be seeing nine, and we are both correct. Yeah. Until we stand in the same on the same side, we cannot see the same things. We cannot see things the same. Even the people who grew up in the same environment, Cain and Abel are a perfect example. They grew up in the same environment, got the same training and everything. But see the way they became. We're even going to go down as we're going down. We're going to see all these people. Isaac was trained by Abraham. Abraham, uh, I the the people who trained Abraham trained him well. So God called him out. He came out. He was trained. He trained Isaac. Isaac was trained by him, and Isaac learned. Isaac gave birth to Asa. Um, oh, they've not spoken about where they give birth. Oh no, they have. So they gave birth to Jacob and Esau. Both of them were learning. And one person still did whatever he did. You think they were teaching both of them all these things. But when you become an adult, when you get to the age of accountability, you have to decide some things yourself. Your parents are not going to decide those things for you. And so I'm just laughing at those people who look at other people's parents and look at other people's children and laugh at the parents. The parents have done their part. These children are adults for crying out loud. So whatever they do is not connected to their parents in any way. Their parents' part was to train them in the way that they should grow. And when they grow, they should not depart. If they grow and depart, it's their choice. God was just saying, it's not like he was saying that when you teach them those things, they must follow it. No. Like he would have also said when he died on the cross to save us, all of us must be saved. No, it's a will thing. Just do your part and then let the other people do their part. Do your part. And so these people, you, you, you just might not know. When someone offends you, when someone gets you angry, try to talk to the person. The Bible says that talk to the person. If the person doesn't listen, bring one extra person. If they don't listen, take them to the leaders. If they don't listen, treat them like an unbeliever. Simple. 
Just know that the person will keep doing that thing. So treat them as such. Keep a distance. If, if it's going to help your sanity, keep a distance. I've told you guys time without number. I unfollow people. Not because they're doing anything bad, but because some of the things they do is not how I was brought up. Some people have some braggadocious way that they flaunt things around that can get to you. I won't follow you. Mm -mm. You know, while I'm guiding my heart to all diligence. All diligence. Okay. And so he kept digging wells and these people were taking over. Digging and these people were taking over. And at some point, he dug another one and they didn't come and take over. God, <clears throat> sometimes you'll be doing something great and God will be stopping you in a kind of way. God will not come and sometimes he knows that if he comes and says to you, stop, you will not stop. He knows. He knows that if he comes and says, princess, stop, you will not stop. So he will make something that they, you go wash body. Ha, people, I know what I've been through. So I know what I'm talking about. You go wash body and you might look at that thing somehow, sometimes in the heat of the moment and think it's the enemy. It's not the enemy, it's God. God is so very much involved. Oh yeah, he is. He is. So they are building the world. I'm sure God just wanted him to go away, like away, away, away from that place. So each time he kept moving, he digs one well, they take it, he moves a little. He was probably maybe getting comfortable in a place where God didn't want him. So he built a well there, they take it, he moves a little bit. He builds another one, they take it, he moves a little bit. And he's going into the place of fulfillment of purpose. Sometimes hardships will have to push you in your place of purpose. Yeah, why? Because some of us get comfortable in our comfort zones. We don't want to move. Like we get a, a, a glimpse of some glory, a glimpse of some goodness that God is doing to you. And you just become comfortable in that level of goodness. Meanwhile, God wants to show you his manifold Shekinah glory, like the weighty presence. That's what he wants to rest upon you. And you just got the finger on your head and you're just excited and you want to stay where it's just God's finger that is on your head. Meanwhile, you can carry his weighty presence. What are you talking about? I want to get to that point, Lord. Help me. So help me, God. So let's not become comfortable. I'm sure God didn't just want Isaac there. So he kept making those people do those things. So sometimes some really difficult and challenging things might be happening to you. Just ask God what he wants you to do. Just ask God, like, Lord, what do you want me to do? Why is this thing coming up over and over and over and over again? Why would I do this and people keep doing? I'll dig it well and people keep taking. I'll keep dig it well and people keep taking. It's not fair. What's going on? Let God speak to you. Let God speak to you. He would speak to you, though. He would. And so he goes on and on and on. And he built it. He got this one and nobody came and took it. And he built an altar there. I said, these people had a way of sealing their covenants, sealing every good thing that happened to them. They have a way they sow a seed. They're... I don't know what your own kind of altar is that you can be building. There is a way you can build an altar when God gives you a testimony, when God gives you a word, when God gives you a promise. There is a way you can seal that promise. And you still go to God and ask him how. Go to God and ask him how. And he pitched the tent and then all of a sudden Abimelech comes back to him and he's like, oh, this, 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 and this, and this. And he says, ah, oh, you sent me away. Now you're coming back. Mm. You dealt with me the other time. Now you're coming back. I should help you. Let's not use the past to deal with people. See, truth is, if you want to treat them right, treat them right. If you don't want to treat them right, don't treat them right. It's, it's clean and safe. The Bible says that be hot or cold. Do not be lukewarm. I'll spew you out. I'll spew you out. So if you want to be nice to them, be nice to them. If you don't want, don't, don't attempt to join the thing. It's that simple. It's that simple. And it says, hey, so you guys came here. After you drove me, now you're coming to me. He says, no, that we didn't drive you. We're doing you good. See, even after what you did, we didn't jungle justice you or we didn't do something terrible to you. You know, and we just sent you away to co to go to another place to go and live your life there and all. 
instead because i'm sure some of those things would have been punishable lies tellings and all those things but he told the lie and they didn't look at it like anything the inside rider just told him that he should go away peacefully and peaceably and he left so he said ah how can you be saying that we've treated you somehow we drove you away no we didn't drive you now far from it so sometimes people do some things to you and you read it wrong meanwhile the men's good for you the men good for you Probably those people are sending him away so that somebody should not get crazy, crazy, crazy tempted by about the wife and then do something stupid. Yeah, we know that everybody is supposed to be disciplined, but what about those who are just not disciplined? What about those? Also, I have to take that into cognizance and be very, very careful and be very cautious. So he built an altar and they made a covenant and... Uh, He had concluded that they hated him. That's, that was his conclusion, that they drove him away because they hated him, so they drove him away. Meanwhile, these people were not really driving him away. They were doing things good. So, that's what happened. What happened? Oh, my God. So, that's what happened between them. He says, no, 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 no. That's not it. And then they made a covenant. And it came to pass concerning the well which he dig, and they found water. So, Sometimes you connect with some people, you do some kind gestures and stuff, you let go of problems, you let go of issues, and God blesses you. It, it looks like, to me, I feel like maybe a little bit in his heart, he was holding grief or anger against Abimelech. And up until Abimelech came back and then they fixed things together and then they got into a covenant and then God blessed him. They found water in the world that they dug. Can you imagine? Well, some things might just be coincidence, but the truth is holding people in your heart or getting mad at people for something that they did to you, especially without telling them that this thing really hurt you and all that is detrimental to you, not to them. Because they'll go about living their lives and it will pain you some more because you see them living their lives and in your mind you're like, are these people for real? Do they know what they've done to me? You know, they don't know. They don't even know that I think that they did to you is hurtful. They don't. No, sincerely speaking, some people don't. They don't know. And so he, he uh, when he found water, he was happy. The people had departed from him and uh, they left and went back to the place. But they had made a covenant with them. Truth is, when you see people, godly people, try to connect with them. Do the best you can. These people saw the power of God in his life. A lot of people saw the power of God in Joseph's life. A lot of people saw the power of God in other people's lives and they connected with them. You just never know. You just never know. When you see godly people, when you see people who carry the power of God, connect with them. Connect with them. It brings a lot of good and a whole lot of difference in your life as a child of God. Okay, people, I think that's it for today. We had this. And yes, then we went to the part of, it says, and Asa was 40 years old when he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Barry, the Hittite, and Bashmad, Bashimad, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and to Rebekah. The, the father had said they should not take off a wife of him in the land of Canaan. I, um, um, Jacob had flown. He ran away and went. And probably they would have followed up and made sure that they also get a wife from their father's side. Not from Canaanites. Not from the Canaanites. But hey, Oga, who had sold his bed rights, decided as well to take wives from that place. And these people were pain in Isaac's heart. Like they, these women were pain ah. god help us so this thing of marriage eh? it's a serious matter it didn't start now it started in the days of old they have places they have families they have communities where they go choose wives but i'm sure in his anger and his bitterness he decided to prove them wrong to prove a point to them and destroy himself and hurting his father and being a pain in his father's heart by taking women from Canaan. Be careful. Though. The anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. So because you're angry with somebody, you go and put yourself in that kind of scenario. For we sake. I said, now they suffer, they suffer. <laughs> yes, your parents will feel pain. 
Yes, your family members will hurt. They'll feel bad about it. But who they feel the pain? <laughs> you or them. Your pain is bigger. Because you're doing something that is not even in the will of God. And it will eventually backfire. And when it backfires, you have to come and start again from scratch. You have to come and start again from where you stopped. Because God is not going to give you another assignment when you're not finished with the previous one that he gave you. Oh yeah, that's how it works. God is not going to give you a second assignment when you've not done the first. He's just going to let you be until you wake up or you snap out of whatever you're in and do that which he has told you to do. Then you're definitely going to see the connection to the next thing. Maybe he needs me to be doing a chapter a day because he wants me to join a, a, a recording um, organization where they do voiceovers for people and stuff like that. And they're only going to see me talking live when I come live. If I'm not doing this program, people will not see me. If I'm not talking on Facebook or YouTube or all those places, people will not see me. So maybe there's someone that might want me to do something at CNN or BBC. They would have to see me talking. And if I'm not talking... It wouldn't happen. So God expects me to come and start a chapter a day. And if I didn't start a chapter a day, I would not have gotten a new phone. Mm -hmm. Because the phone, the new phone that I've been praying about and desiring from God was wrapped in a chapter a day. Oh, yeah. And so if I didn't start a chapter a day, I won't get the phone and I'll keep praying. And it'll be looking like God is delaying me while I'm the one who's delaying myself. By not obeying what he has said I should do. Because the blessings come with obedience. Oh yeah. So people. That's where we're wrapping up for today. It has been a beautiful moment of the chapter a day. I always get to say I love you so very much. But God loves you way, way more. Get to like, share and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell. So you get all our updates each time we upload a new video. Or we get to go live. And so, until tomorrow, study Genesis chapter 27 and come back here together. Let's have a soul time together. Thank God it's Friday. I don't know if Mammy inspired Griselda see. I don't know if she has gone live already or she's still to go live. Just be on the lookout. I'll also be on the lookout. I mean, it has been a marathon month for me. Man. And God has just given us a little bit of rest. So, I'm sure I'm going to get on my YouTube and do a lot of things this week or the next and hopefully we'll get a lot of a chapter of days and we'll get a lot of um we're starting a channel with a chapter a day actually with the bible version and the full version and everything so i'm hoping that god is going to speak to a lot more people on every social media platform that we can get on and like i said we're also looking out to putting this on other social media platforms as well so don't freak out don't back out Let's get together and enjoy what God has for us. Father, bless your word and graft it on the fleshy tables of our hearts. Let's be doers and not hearers only. Lord, I pray you give us the grace that is necessary to be able to stand the test of time and not to be fooled and not to be deceived, O Lord. Father, cause us to understand the power in divine positioning and in obedience to your word, in seeing the way you see and doing things the way you do them. You want us to do them. Thank you, Lord God, because I know you've heard an answer. Bless all those who are starting their days. Give them an awesome day. For those who are halfway their day, Lord, I pray that you bless the rest of the day. And for those who are about to sleep, Lord, sound sleep, sweet dreams, visions, and dreams, just like you promised in your word. Take glory, Father, but now forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Until tomorrow. Ciao, ciao. Mm.